So we go back to analyze, dimension reduction, factor. This stays the same, but we need a few new things. Under extraction, we're going to ask for the scree plot, which is the secondary thing that I'll show you in a moment. We need it to tell us how many factors we wanted to pull out. And there's two options for us to do so. One is based on the eigenvalue, which is what we just discussed. And we could say, pull out as many factors as there are where the eigenvalue is greater than one, which is what we said, or a fixed number of factors, in this case, two. Both would give me the exact same result. So we'll do that and we'll hit continue. Under rotation, what we need is what's known as the very max rotation. What this will do is we'll come up with a solution not only that finds us two factors that explain such variance, but it'll find us two factors that are as different from one another as humanly possible. And we'll see what that looks like. Under scores, we want to save as variable the regression values. What this is going to do is it's going to not just tell us what the factors are, but it's going to tell us what the value for each respondent is on each of those factors. And we'll see what that looks like in a second. Under options, we're just going to ask for the responses to be sorted by size. This is just going to make things easier for, easier for us to look at. And then we hit OK. So, so far our results look the same. We can ignore the KMO and anti-image stuff because we did that already. We can ignore the eigenvalue variance explained because we've already done that. I do want to take a look at the scree plot. So the scree plot really is just plotting these eigenvalues. And the technique that people are told is to look for the elbow. So if this is an arm, this would be the elbow. So here's the shoulder, here's the hand, and here's the elbow. And you're said, look to the left of the elbow, which gives you two values. That's a technique that's commonly used. I really don't like this technique, so I'm not gonna spend any more time on it. But I feel like you should know because you might hear about this. We move down and we find the component matrix, which is gonna give us some information, but we actually don't want this. What we want is the rotated component matrix. This is the solution that we're most interested in. And the way to read this is the following. This is telling us we have two factors, factor one, factor two. And this question, it is important to buy a toothpaste that prevents cavities, is very, very related to factor one, 0.96. This is a correlation, so it ranges from negative one to one, and basically not related to factor two. This question here is very related to factor one. This question here is very negatively related to factor one, but still related. And the opposite is true for these three. It's very related to factor two, factor two, and factor two. So just to put this on a slightly different table, what you see here are the factors grouped together. And what we now do, just like we did with cluster analysis, is come up with names for them. So perhaps something like factor one represents questions that are related to health benefits. And factor two represents questions that are related to something we'll call social benefits. And just to show you what this looks like under the hood, what factor analysis is doing is it's creating two new factors, factor one and factor two, so that factor one is highly correlated with these three questions. This is from before questions one, three, and five. And factor two is highly correlated with these three questions. And when you notice factor two is not correlated with these questions, and factor one is not correlated with these questions. So there's really nothing magical here. It's simply creating a factor, which is the average of these three questions, such that the average value, the new factor, highly correlates with the underlying questions themselves. One other thing to look at is now, in SPSS, we have two new columns, fact one underscore one and fact two underscore one. What this is telling us is these are the values for that factor for this individual. Now, as before, I don't really like to leave this named as such because it's confusing. So instead, let's rename these to something usable. We go to variable view and we rename this to something like health. And we say the label is health benefits. And this is going to be something like social. And we'll say the label is social benefits. And so now what we could do is things like asking if individuals who differ in gender also differ in their respect to how they respond to these different questions. So what we could do is look at a simple t-test. Say analyze, compare means, independent sample t-test, gender, our grouping variable is zero versus one. And let's look at both health and social factors. And so what it looks like, if we look at the significance tables, in fact, no. The various benefits don't seem to vary as a function of gender. Even though there appear to be some differences, they're not statistically significantly different. And largely, this is probably due to the fact that we have a small sample size. But we can start doing these types of things. 
And the reason this is nice is rather than trying to describe these genders based on six dimensions, we only have to think of them in terms of two dimensions. So now it's going to be your turn. I'm going to give you quite the big task, and we'll debrief this task after you try and accomplish it yourself. What you're going to do is use a new data set. This is data on instructor ratings. It, there are a number of demographic questions, but the questions of interest are these 12. They're labeled item 1, item 2, item 3, through item 12 in the data set. They're agree-disagree questions. So these are student evaluations of faculty, not at Carnegie Mellon, don't worry. And what I want you to do is the following. First, answer the question, can we conduct a factor analysis, why or why not? Regardless of whether you can or cannot, how many factors should there be? Which questions load with which factors? What would you name those factors? Then, once you save the factors as we did a moment ago, use the new factors to conduct a cluster analysis. So instead of a cluster analysis on the underlying 12 items, just use your outcome factors. So if you come up with two factors, your cluster analysis would only involve those two variables. How many clusters would you have? What would you call those clusters? and then try and describe those clusters based on different demographics. So this is your assignment before you're allowed to advance on to the next video.